Thank you so much for joining me in this video which is aimed at firework beginners and if you are a beginner and having your first back garden firework display a common question people ask is what do you use to light your fireworks with? Well so many beginners gravitate towards these, they're tapers. These are the most readily available firework lighter, the most well-known lighter, everyone has heard of a taper they're also the cheapest, uh, often given away free of charge with firework orders. You can also find these in some rocket packs and also some selection boxes. But is a taper the best item to use to light your fireworks with, even if you're on a tight budget? Well, the short answer to that is possibly not. If you can give me just a few minutes of your time with this video, I'll run through how tapers work some inherent disadvantages with this type of item for lighting fireworks and also I will make some suggestions on the next level up on the pyro ladder for something a little bit better to light your fireworks with but won't necessarily cost you that much more money. Before we dive into the fascinating world of tapers, if you are new to fireworks and also new to my channel or new to the UKFR community, a very warm welcome. I just want to say that I'm not a fireworks retailer. I don't own a fireworks shop, for example, so I'm not trying to sell anything. There's no ulterior motives with any of my content. It really is just a case of sharing my knowledge and experience to try and help the public have safer firework displays. Tapers are a cheap product, let's get that out of the way first of all, and so there's a massive variation in quality. However, all tapers share two important characteristics when it comes to lighting fireworks. One is that they are very long and thin, so at arm's length they do tend to wobble around quite a bit. The other is they burn with an ember at the end, so it glows red, but it doesn't project a flame as such. With modern fuses they are protected by a, an outer coating, usually it's green coloured and we refer to this type of fuse as visco fuse. This is different than the old days, if you are over a certain age, fireworks used to have a blue touch paper which you'd light and then retire. That was probably easier to light with this type of product. Fuses are a little bit uh, trickier. So putting these uh, factors together, let's take a quick look at this video. So here we've got a firework fuse that has got a bit of a firework, the body of the firework itself, to press against. This does make it a lot easier to light the fuse with the taper. So this will be typical of cakes or candles. A lot of fireworks, however, have fuses that stick up into the air, out of the side of the firework, or dangle down, as in the case coming up, which is a rocket's fuse. This makes it a little bit trickier to light using a taper, because there's no flame. A couple of tips here. First of all, these are quite safe to hold further up, so if you've got the, the end glowing and you're wearing gloves of course, hold it a little bit further up just to make everything a little bit more solid so it's not going to wobble around. The other tip I'd give you as well is to be patient. Don't expect fuses to take immediately. So in this clip here, as you can see, it does take a few seconds before anything happens. One critical thing to keep in mind with tapers is that they're not waterproof. If these do get wet, I'm afraid it is game over. They simply won't stay alight. Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make here. The original plan with this video was basically to show how bad tapers are and to encourage people to invest in something a little better. This is based on my experiences with tapers that are very thin and narrow, they wobble too much, and some of them don't even stay alight for very long either. However, the packet of tapers that I grabbed to shoot this video with are by a company called Trafalgar Fireworks, and it's a well-known company in UKFR circles because they make some wonderful products, including some indoor fireworks and novelty items. You can see a few of their products actually on the shelves behind me, and it turns out that Trafalgar don't half know how to make a bloody good taper. So instead of having a taper which was pretty low quality, I found myself actually being impressed by said tapers. So completely unplanned, I am going to do just a quick review of this tape because I think it, it warrants it. Certainly it shows you what to look for if you do want a better quality taper. And 
I know I might repeat myself in this video, but poor quality tapers really are horrible to use. They really do make lighting fireworks difficult. The experience with this was quite the opposite. So these come in a packet of three. On the back of the packet, it's got a claimed runtime of 90 minutes. We'll come to that in a moment. If there is one downside with these, they are somewhat difficult to light. You have to keep a flame on these for uh, quite a little while to get them going. But once they are up and running, they do burn and for well over 90 minutes in fact. Here is a photo of a taper after 90 minutes. As you can see, there's still some life left in this. Here is some footage of the taper burning and whilst it doesn't look much, if we switch over to the infrared camera and look, no expense spared with UKFR Productions even looking at humble tapers. So switching over to the infrared camera, you can see here that this is actually well alight. Note also that the heat is very localised to the tip, so these are safe to hold a bit further up the shaft if you want to stop them wobbling around so much at arm's length. And have you ever wondered how hot tapers burn for? Well, I'm about to tell you that, of course. If you check out the temperature reading here, the scale in this video ranged from six degrees, which is the ambient temperature, all the way up to nearly 400 degrees Celsius. The video you've seen just now of a taper in use was this actual product. So just to remind you of these in action, I asked Warren at Trafalgar Fireworks today how much these cost. What he said was, although he imports and sells these to other retailers, they're intended really as a safety item to give away with firework orders. So there isn't really a retail price as such. What he said was, if you are gonna walk into a firework shop and buy just these, so there's no reason for a retailer to give them to you for nothing, you're looking at a nominal cost, say for example, a pound for a packet of three, and given that these have basically two hours runtime per taper, that's a whopping six hours of firework lighting time for just a quid. A couple of suggestions now for products that are considered by enthusiasts to be a bit better than tapers. Which one I recommend depends on the type of display you're doing. Let's first of all look at a more long and drawn out display. I mean that in the nicest possible way. Say for example you've got a selection box from a supermarket so you've got lots of smaller fireworks. You're taking them out one by one, lighting them, having fun with the family. So you're going to be out for quite a while. My recommendation for that is one of these. These come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. It is a gas powered windproof lighter, often marketed as a barbecue lighter. Make sure you do go for one though that does say it is windproof because these will have a bright blue, strong blue flame on them which makes lighting fuses really easy. Some of them are also refillable but even if they're not these cost between three and five pounds for example and more and more firework shops are selling these so even if you just use this as a disposable lighter for your display and don't use it again it's still good value for money. A key feature to look for is a trigger to pull so you've got a flame on demand that does make life so much easier for you because between fireworks you haven't got anything that's burning to worry about. Also you can keep this uh, dry if it is raining so that's a suggestion for that. The other type of firework display that you might be doing is where you've got your fireworks all set up and ready to go. This type of firework display where you're firing the fireworks in sequence will be a lot shorter so a typical firework display for an enthusiast once you start getting into the hobby it might last say five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes that sort of thing the recommendation for that type of display is this it's a pyrotechnic compound lighter called a port fire these burn with an intense windproof flame and they make lighting firework fuses very easy the runtime on these is three to five minutes each and once you've lit them you can't put them out. So they're not an on-demand flame like on the barbecue lighter. So that is a disadvantage of them. Cost-wise, you're looking at about a pound per port fire. So they're not expensive in themselves, but if you have to buy a lot of port fires, the cost can mount up. Hence, you can see, if you are gonna be out in the garden for a long time, it's not really practical to keep a port fire burning for all of that time. You're better off with a, a lighter like that. 
but for a shorter display if you want really the, the most intense flame and I think the flames on these are better than they are on the cheaper lighters then a port fire is certainly something to consider. So to wrap things up then, let's uh, look at a hierarchy, if you like, of firework lighters from worst to best. I haven't mentioned it yet because this shouldn't be on your radar, but the worst possible type of firework lighter is a disposable lighter that you'll find in your corner shop or the garage, uh, usually used to light cigarettes. The problem with these, well, there's two problems. The first is the flame uh, is just a yellow flame and it's not in the slightest bit windproof. The other problem is the flint on these is so close to the flame that means your thumb is going to be close to the fuse when it lights and it's very easy to get burnt fingers and thumbs. But really the lack of windproofness, if that's a word, on this uh, makes these a complete pain to use in the garden so don't even go there. So the first rung on the lighting ladder then is tapers that we've uh, explored today but there is such a gulf between bad quality tapers which really will make your life a misery and good quality tapers like the Trafalgar tapers so if you are going to use tapers please look for good quality ones like this however I'd encourage you to look at the next step up in terms of intensity of flame you really can't go wrong with a port fire these are tried and tested by enthusiasts and professionals for years. They are highly recommended. The downside though is that it might not be practical or cost effective if you're doing a long drawn out display to keep one of these on the go. So the alternative to that is, as we saw earlier, this, which is a windproof on-demand lighter, which you can pick up fairly cheaply from most firework shops. And in case you're wondering what the pinnacle of firework lighting is, if money was no object, it's a large blowtorch, such as the Rothy uh, on the desk here. Now, beginners often say to me, what do you use to light your fireworks with? And when I say a blowtorch, they think I'm joking. They just laugh because the idea of someone running around a fireworks site with a blowtorch sounds dangerous. However, these have got such an intense flame on them and they are an on-demand lighter in fact, let me just quickly show you a video of a Rothy making mincemeat of a fuse. Now, by no means do I encourage people starting out in fireworks to spend 60 or 70 pounds on a large blowtorch to light your fireworks. So if you don't need to do that, uh, find your feet first with something along these lines uh, and then see how you get on. If you find that you're doing displays every year, and you want something that's going to be very, very good at lighting your fireworks with, I can't recommend these highly enough. Well that's all from me. That is quite enough taper excitement for one day. I need to go and put a cold towel on my head and recover from all of this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.